we dispute these allegations and look forward to presenting our case in court, AT&T said in a statement. Turpin's core argument is that after his account was first compromised in June 2017, AT&T pledged to safeguard it with an additional passcode that would be required to authorize any changes. Turpin, however, says the company didn't enforce that requirement. Turpin filed his complaint August 15 via the Los Angeles firm Greenberg Glusker Fields Clayman and Matchtinger LLP in the United States District Court for the Central District of California. If AT&T had stuck with their promise that nobody could get in without that six-digit thing, nobody would be talking about this now, Turpin told News Pulse Finance in an interview following the court filing. The first time, Attackers hacked not just the AT&T line described in the lawsuit but also a T-Mobile, TMUS, line, according to Turpin. But they inflicted relatively little damage, $60,000, only $2,000 was sort of direct thieving from me, he said. I went to both T-Mobile and AT&T and said, how do you protect me? Turpin said. Both carriers promptly set up extra security passcodes called extra security at AT&T, account verification at T-Mobile. T-Mobile sent a statement that read in part, T-Mobile is always working to improve security so we can stay ahead of fraud schemes. The second attack targeted not people but funds, three tokens from startups that Turpin wouldn't name at this time. The companies paid him for PR work in part with early access to tokens they later sold to investors in initial coin offerings, a semi-regulated alternative to initial public offerings of stock. ICOS can be exceedingly risky, but Turpin said these three coins were doing fantastic on January 7, 2018, the date of the second attack. Some of these wallets were staking they generated additional new tokens by helping mathematically verify their cryptocurrency platforms, so they had to be left online full-time. His complaint says the unknown attackers got an AT&T store employee in Norwich, Connecticut, to move his phone number to their SIM card, then used that to bypass the password on an account that hid these private keys. Turpin's T-Mobile line stayed secure. Turpin described this online account only vaguely beyond saying it was not a password manager. It involves them getting into third-party software that I didn't realize they could get into, he said. That allowed them to get into a file that had a hidden component. There are too many ways to compromise the contents of SMS, explained Chris Weisopal, chief technology officer of the CA Technologies, CA, security firm Veracode. These are non-trivial attacks, but when the payoff is big enough they will be used. Harold Feld, a veteran telecom lawyer, suggested that at NT's alleged failure to keep Turpin's account private gives him favorable odds if he can overcome forced arbitration clauses in at NT's user agreement. Under the Communications Act provisions 206 and 207, he can sue AT&T for any actual damages caused by their failure to do something they are required to do under the Communications Act, explained Feld, who also serves as senior vice president with the digital rights group Public Knowledge. Turpin offered similar advice for anybody who's merely well-known online. His grumpy conclusion, it's a travesty that the multi-trillion dollar global telco industry can't figure out basic security. More from Rob. Email Rob at Rob at, follow him on Twitter at at Rob Guerrero.